plug her back on up here. Yeah. All right, everyone, we'll go ahead and get started. Manager Bob Black, Danielle, why don't you start us off? Hey, buddy, what do you think has been the biggest difference of Austin Bomber from his first seven starts to his last seven starts? Well, there's a number of things, but uh, a couple of things come to mind uh, right off the top of my head. First of all, uh, he's settled in, he's become more comfortable, and he's not, uh, you know, overly trying to impress uh, all of us. I think early on, uh, you know, once he got settled into spring training and once we started the regular season, I think he, I think. I think he tried too hard. That first start against the Dodgers, uh, that was out of character from what we saw in spring training, uh, emotionally. And now I think that he's, uh, you know, he's got it together uh, with a calmness and poise and competitiveness uh, on the mental side, which is awesome. Uh, and I think on the pitching side, uh, there was a little tweak uh, with his delivery. Uh, Within the first couple starts, uh, he can he can maybe expand on that. But it was some, just something really simple with his initial step once he started his windup. And I think the uh, improved changeup and the use of the changeup. I think the changeup was always in there, uh, but now it's it's frequent. Uh, he's throwing it with great confidence. Uh, it's got you know a, a great separation of velocity from his uh, from his fastball. So I think it. Makes his fastball better. And I think the curve and the slider that we saw in spring training have been there too. So, you know, it's just a really good four pitch mix. But I think from uh, from April until now, I think it's more, uh, you know, more poised, more calm, uh, more uh, focused, more awareness. Uh, you know, for instance, the double play ball that he turned against Grisham. Now, we had that same double play ball against Pollock, his first start, and he threw it away. So I think that's a big difference right there. You can look at that and make a <clears throat> have an antidote. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll go to Thomas Hardy. Um, buddy, Austin has had a lot of success against the San Diego Padres. Um, do you see him not just simply um, holding them down and kind of dominating the games, but also getting ahead in the cat and mouse game against them. Well, yeah, anytime you're, you're starting to face a team a number of times, it really becomes making pitches, make, making pitches, uh, changing speeds, moving the ball in and out, being unpredictable, all those things. Uh, you know, early on, I think a pitcher always has the advantage when uh, he faces a team the first couple of times and then that wears off. And I think it becomes, you know, just mono y mono. And I think he's doing a really good job with, with his pitches. And again, you know the hitters a little bit, but they know you a lot more. And then it becomes, to your words, a cat and mouse game. Um, also, to see CJ Crone click one, I know we've been talking about him. You moved him down in the lineup, but you felt like he would get his timing back. Uh, what do you think this means? Well, you know, he's in his career, he's shown uh, he's shown home run power. Uh, you can, you know, you can look up his stats and you've seen, uh, you know, 20 plus homers a, a, a few years. And I, I think that's in there. He's still a young man. He still has a powerful swing. Uh, so I think they're coming. He's just in a little bit of a low right now. Uh, you know, he's taking his walks, which is great. He's not expanding the zone. But, uh, you know, he didn't really quite catch that one, and he, it still went out of the ballpark. So, uh, you know, I'm still believing that there, there, there are spurts in there of carrying the club uh, with the long ball and, and slugging percentage. So hopefully tonight's a start. 
Hey, last one for me. I'm talking about Gomber. He gives up the double to Caratini to open the sixth inning. And he is the guy who pitches with, with a lot of emotion. How did he use that to the good that is? Well, I, I, you know, if you channel it the right way, I think it, it, it really keeps you focused and, you know, truly engaged with a, you know, with a hypersensitivity if you, if you channel it. And I think he's been able to do that, you know, through his last, you know, handful of starts uh, when it does get hot and there's a little bit of a crisis. But, uh, you know, that's a good thing. Sometimes it can go the other way against you, but uh, he's shown that he can use that to his advantage. And I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, he's emotional. Uh, you can see some, uh, you know, some body action, some body movements uh, when he's out there. Uh, you know, he's into it, Tom's. I mean, he's into it. He's competing. Uh, he's a really, really good competitor. Oh, I, I want to follow up on one thing. Um, umpire um, Doug Eddings was checking or at least talking to him at the end of the first inning that you went out there. What was that about? Oh, that was nothing, really. That was just the... Uh, uh, you know, Austin uses the rosin bag, and I think he he sort of flipped it on his uh, forearm. And uh, Doug said, you know, don't do that anymore. They put it on your hand, uh, you know, bounce it on your, you know, the palm of your hand, the back of your hand, but don't bounce it on your forearm. Is there, is that? Like a... You know, there's, you've you read all about the, the, yeah. the crackdowns. Yeah. I think Doug is just telling Austin to, to get out in front of it. So that was. Uh, that was truly nothing. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Patrick Saunders. Hi, buddy. Hey, Austin came to the, the Rockies with the reputation uh, of being something, something of a fly ball, ball pitcher. He had 14 ground ball outs today. Um, is that because his changeup has been so good, or what? Do you have a, a reason why he's you know he's starting to get so many ground ball outs? You know, he's going to continue to. Uh, to get outs a lot of different ways because he does throw, uh, you know, fastballs at the top of the zone. Uh, you know, he does throw the curve ball and that can be lifted at times. Uh, he can't throw the slider. Uh, that can be lifted at times if it's not down. But I think that the ground balls tonight are the ground balls that I think that he's produced and generated over the last number of starts is a direct, re a direct, a direct reflection of the change. I really do. So you're on point there. And also the, the ability to, to, to jam right-handed hitters and left with the fastball. Uh, I think there was at least three or four outs that he jammed right-handed hitters off their knuckles and produced grounders to the right side, to the left side. And I think he got a couple grounders to the right side on the lefties with, with fastballs too. So I think the, the fastball command crowding guys will get the grounder. And uh, to your point, uh, a really good changeup will get the grounder too. So that's a really good sign. And for him, every time he does that, he puts that uh, in the memory bank and realizes that uh, the change is a great, great weapon for him. And one more for me regarding Austin. When you first saw him, buddy, um, you know, let's say back in spring training, uh, did you kind of envision this is the type of pitcher that he could evolve into? Not to say that he's done yet, but, well, but did you see this potential? Well, at, at first glance, I like the stuff. You know, I liked it. I said that, you know, the first couple of weeks of spring training, I liked his mix of pitches. Now, I didn't know how he was, how he was going to put them together. Right, I didn't know his, you know, the true control and command. I didn't know his feel. I didn't know his uh, pitching instincts. Uh, but as we went through spring training, I started gaining some confidence in those things. And then I think more importantly, through April, uh, I learned, uh, you know, the student uh, part of him. You know, the, uh, the teachability, uh, the coachability. He listens and can apply coaching. And I think that's been a huge part of, uh, you know, his growth. And so now I think, yes, I think what he's doing now, he can continue. Because I think the, the arm action is pretty clean. Uh, you know, he repeats his delivery. He's athletic. Uh, and he's got four pitches. He can spin the ball. And he's got a good feel for the change. And he's got conviction in his fastball. So he's got a lot going for him. Uh, as far as just what the makings of a successful pitcher. Hey, 
that. Thank you, buddy. Yep. I got time for a few more. We'll go to Owen Perkins. Owen, go ahead. Hey, buddy. Uh, I'm getting some feedback. Um, are you, um, I, you know, Austin seems to have be getting better and better. I don't know if that's an illusion or not, but was tonight about as the best you've seen him pitch? And, and what's the ceiling? You know, can he keep getting better? Well, I, I think the game in New York was outstanding uh, against the Mets. I think tonight's game was very comparable to that. Uh, yeah, I think he can continue to get better. I think there's, uh, you know, there's always room for, there's always room for improvement and, and really fine tune things and, and really get better. I think that it's in there. Uh, but, you know, those two games stand out, right? Those were outstanding you know, brilliant, brilliantly pitched games. And he can, he, and he should learn from those and continue to, you know, just, uh, you know, progress. I don't know what the ceiling is, but, uh, you know, he's a, he's a major league starting pitcher right now. He's one of 150 guys or so. And he's, and he's pitching at, uh, you know, the upper end of those guys, uh, you know, over the last month and a half. So uh, good for him and, and keep it going. Cause I think that, uh, Again, I think our guys feed off each other in that regard. And the more good guys you have, the better off your team has a chance to win. And one more um, on a different topic for me. Uh, how big was it to get uh, for, for Charlie to get that extra base on Trevor's yeah. uh, fly? You know, that was, a, that was a good gamble by Chuck. And, uh, you know, Mac, and then Mac got the big hit behind him. But, you know, those are the things you do that uh, you talk about these things pre-series. Uh, you talk about in spring training. You, and Grissom's a really good defender. He had to go back in the ball. But he got behind it just, you know, the throw was a little bit offline. But I think it was a gamble worth taking to get into scoring position in, in a close game like that. So it was a calculated risk. And, uh, you know, we knew that uh, it was going to be close. But the throw was just enough offline where Tatis couldn't make it. Great, thank you. Yep. Noah, go ahead. Hey, bud. Um, to follow up on Owen with Charlie, um, he's had, I believe, an 11 or 12 game hitting streak now, and he's been getting on base close, I believe, to a 600 on base in that span. What have you seen out of him recently? Where you know, he's using whole field as evidence tonight, right? He got, you know, he, he stayed in there and, you know, fought off the fastball to look to the inside and, you know, got that first run. Taking his walks, uh, that leads to the high on base percentage. And, you know, he's driving the ball better. You know, there's, there's doubles, you know, the game that, uh, you know, that last game in Pittsburgh was, a, you know, a huge game for us. Charlie started, I thought that, that series, Charlie started to really swing the bat well. You know, I, I think he's, you know, he's driving the ball better to left center. You know, he's getting his knocks. He's getting his knocks. So, you know, Charlie does have the ability to collect hits, uh, to collect them in bunches. We saw that last year. And we've seen it over his career. But I think, uh, you know, more importantly, I think that, you know, his selectivity uh, is in a real good spot right now. And then lastly, with Austin Gomber, now on the year, his home ERA is below one but his road ERA is north of five. What do you think he needs to change to get more of the results that he's been getting at Coors and get them out on the road? Well, again, I think, you know, every game's different. Every game's unique. Uh, I think, again, not, I don't have collectively every home, every road start, but uh, again, it's, you know, what he did tonight, look at the first pitch strike ratio, uh, look at the first, two out of three pitches. Uh, I bet, uh, you know, that's, those were well over, probably close to 70% strikes the first uh, three pitchers, uh, pitches during that bat. I think he's got to do more of that on the road. Uh, you know, I think he's got to throw uh, his changeup uh, with quality like he did tonight, like he did in New York. Uh, you know, he's got, he's got, I guess, plain and simple, he's got to, you know, the pitching principles probably have to come into play a little bit more. That'd be my guess. Thank okay, you, guys. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. Everyone, we're going to have Austin Gomber for you here in about 10 seconds.
All right, everyone, we'll go ahead and get started here with starting pitcher Austin Gomber. Larry Patrick, why don't you start us off? Yeah, congratulations uh, tonight, Austin, on a, a great performance. Uh, you've got a .95 ERA. Uh, you pitched over 23 innings without giving up an earned run at Coors Field. Yet, uh, the reputation of Coors Field over the years has been a bad place for uh, starting pitchers to want to come. How do you feel about the, uh, the stadium and what you've been able to do uh, here as opposed to uh, when you're pitching away from here? Oh, uh, I mean, I like pitching here. I don't have an issue. Um, like I told you guys before, I feel, you know, pretty comfortable pitching here. Um, you know, I actually think you can look at it the opposite way too. Uh, you know, same thing we deal with offensively when we go on the road, how the ball carries different. Does teams deal with that when they come in here? So, um, you know, I feel like you just got to attack their strikes. Um, you know, especially early on in a homestand when a team first gets here. I mean, it is different for sure. So, um, but as far as you know, confidence, I think I feel good pitching anywhere. Uh, but yeah, I like pitching here. You're taking on a team tonight that um, has really been dynamic offensively. Uh, do you feel this is your best game that you've pitched uh, here this season? Yeah, probably. I mean, that's a good team over there. Obviously, um, you know, they're, they're, they've been winning some games and, and they got a lot of talented players. And obviously we're coming off of uh, not our best road trip. So um, it was a big game for us tonight to kind of start the homestand off right. Um, like we've been telling you guys, we feel like we're a better team than what our record says. Um, and we feel like we're a really good team at home and we just want to get started off, uh, start off the homestand on the right step. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thomas Harding, go ahead. Hey, Austin, this is uh, a Padres team you faced three times now and really held them down as far as scoring is concerned and hits and everything else. How much do you change from outing to outing against them? And do you see their wheels turning, trying to find different ways to adjust the game? Uh, yeah, we changed a little bit um, game plan wise going in, but uh, the biggest thing was I just told Diaz before the game, just, you know, we, we got – Obviously had success against them two times. Um, so we kind of had a blueprint of, you know, what we wanted to do. But also, you know, just being aware that they've seen me a little bit more this year and they might, you know, they might come out and make adjustments. So um, just put a lot of trust in Diaz, kind of, you know, rolling with what he sees back there. Uh, he's been doing a great job lately for me. I feel like we got, uh, got some good chemistry going on and starting to learn each other more and more every time out. So I uh, just put a lot of confidence in him. Um, you know, see the numbers down there and just try to execute the pitch. Um, a couple of guys that had um, decent numbers against you, Cronenworth first and Machado also. Um, th were those guys you kind of circle coming in like, hey, let's let's do something different or we know what, what happened against them before, let's do this thing. What, what, what was the plan against those guys? When you say that, because that was exactly the plan with Cronenworth. Uh, a lot of Machado's numbers, I think, were from 2018. When he was in uh, LA at the end of the year, I've faced the Dodgers twice and, and he had he had some good at bats against me, but I, I feel like I've done a better job this year, um, you know, taking that experience and kind of changing what I do against him. But for sure, coming in the night, the last two times I faced him, Cronenworth was a problem. Uh, I felt like he grinded me out every at bat and he had a couple balls hard tonight, man. He's a good hitter. So uh, we try to change the game plan and then, you know, next time we'll face him, we'll, we'll continue to try to figure out. But, uh, yeah, he's a good hitter. He's taking good at bats against me. So um, we'll, we'll you know, continue to look at video and, and try to figure out a way to be a little bit more successful against them. And finally, just how much fun is it to get this chance where, where, where um, you know, you're starting every five days, you're facing guys, maybe some have hit you, some haven't. You get to play that cat and mouse game, study them. How much fun is this for you? A lot of fun, man. Like I told you guys before, uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Uh, I'm very grateful to be here. I'm happy to be a Colorado Rocky and uh, just continue to, to learn and, and try to get better. Um, you know, obviously, I've been throwing the ball pretty well lately, but there's there's things I can improve on for sure. Um, got away with a couple of mistakes tonight, so we'll just continue to go back to the drawing board and, and continue to try. Like you said, I mean, I'm having a lot of fun here.
a lot more fun when running games. So we're trying to keep that going. Thanks, Austin. Thank you. Patrick Saunders. <clears throat> hey, Austin. Buddy was talking extensively about uh, your fork pitch mix, but particularly the change up and how he thinks your ability to incorporate that has made your other pitches better. So my question for you is at what point this season did, did that change become a pitch that you felt, you know, it was part of your arsenal every time you went out on the mound? Um, probably after St. Louis. Um, yeah, I just felt like up until St. Louis, I hadn't really been me, uh, pitch how I pitch, attack how I attack. Um, you know, it's partially guys, the catcher is not knowing me and me not doing a good enough job of, you know, explaining what I do. Um, but yeah, I mean, the first month was pretty frustrating. I think it came to a head in St. Louis because uh, I had really good stuff in St. Louis and I should have pitched better than I did. And I didn't. And I felt like a lot of it was just the way I was attacking, the way I was sequencing guys. Um, it just wasn't to my strengths. It was. You know, I felt like I was pitching more to like a scouting report rather than just pitching to my strengths. So I made it, you know, a pretty clear, um, you know, line there that after that St. Louis start that I was, I was going to be me. I was just going to do what I do and, and live with it. I wasn't going to try to be anybody else. I wasn't going to try to pitch a certain way. I was just going to do what I know, um, do what I've had success with in the past and do what I'm confident in. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing that's changed for me. Excellent. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Danielle. Hey, Austin. Your stats from your first seven games to your last seven games have been drastically different. Um, what do you feel like has been the biggest difference for you? And did it feel like it was kind of building up to that? Or was it kind of like a flip that switched and everything just kind of clicked at once? Um, I think a little bit of both. I think I've had the, the stuff all year. Um, obviously, I wasn't part of my change up early on. Um, but I, I really felt like I had the stuff, you know, the pitches to be successful. I just wasn't using them the right way. I wasn't using them the way I know how to. Um, so, like I said, I mean, after St. Louis, I was very, very frustrated. And it was – I just felt like I wasn't giving my, ch my chance to – give myself the best chance to have success. Um, and so I kind of just was like, hey, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go back to doing what I know how to do. Um, kind of talk to Diaz about how I wanted to attack and we kind of just were building on that. And I think it's getting better every time now. He's starting to learn me more and um, just gaining confidence. Um, you know, I always felt like I could do this, but, you know, it's another thing to go out there and do it. So uh, for sure, gaining confidence, feeling better, feeling more comfortable. But I think it really was just the mindset of me going back to just attack and how I know how to. Thank you. You're All right, three more left. We'll go to Mike Kelly, then Tracy, and then Owen. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, Austin, that, um, that at bat with uh, Grisham in the sixth inning, uh, nine pitches, were you, was it a case of you're not wanting to give in? Or you know, how did you approach that to get that final out? I was trying to get him out. I didn't want to face Machado. I felt like that was my guy. Um, that's the guy I wanted to get out. I got to the two out spot to get Grisham up the lefty. Um, you know, he just had a great at bat, man. He had a really good at bat. He's put together. I mean, Cronin with put together some really good at-bats against me this year. Uh, that was another one. Um, he grinded me, made me make pitches, but fortunately I was able to get out of it. Um, you know, leave many, many on the on-deck circle, and I you know, lead off to make things and then we all do. Thank you. Yeah. Tracy? Austin, you know, Blackie was a pitcher a lot like you were. At times, do you feel like he has a – a better read, like when he's talking to you about the change up and things like that. I mean, when you sit and think about it, do you think he has a little bit better feel for helping you along those lines? Yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot to be learned from Buddy. Um, he's been in the game a long time, uh, pitched a long time in the big leagues, a really good pitcher. And obviously, he's continued to be in the big leagues, you know, as a manager and coach throughout. Uh, so he's got a lot of experience in the game, man. So. Anytime he's willing to offer any kind of insight, I'm, I'm all ears. Uh, you know, it's been good for me so far. A lot of mindset stuff and just throwing myself down and helping me realize those times when I'm in the game where I get into tight spots and I need to slow myself down. And, uh, he'll give a whistle from the dugout or whatever it is if he sees me starting to, to speed up. So he's been, he's been huge for me. And, you know, I really enjoy playing for him. Thank you, sir. I don't want the last question.
Uh, a quick follow up on what you said about uh, St. Louis being a turning point. Do you think there was anything uh, about being in your old park that helped bring back some of your old self? Um, yeah, I mean, not pitching well there, coming there, you got right on it. So, um, yeah, I felt like I should have pitched better. Um, and that's a lot of how the first, you know, month went. It's a, a lot of days where I felt like I should have pitched better and just trying to figure out what that was. And, you know, after six or seven starts, I kind of realized that it was just, you know, the way I was doing it, the way I was going about it, just mentality. I'm, I'm a big believer in, you know, what goes on between the years is, the most important thing. So just kind of trying to change that mentality to attack. I think you see that in my walk totals. I mean, I'm in the strike zone pretty much all the time. And that's kind of the picture that I try to tell you guys I am. And I wasn't doing that early on. So um, there's a lot of different things, you know, sequencing, attacking mentality. But I mean, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, just pitching, you know, not afraid, not afraid, just up all the time on the attack has been the biggest thing for me. And two more quick things. Uh, when you go through the lineup once and hold them hitless as you did tonight, does that change? Um, you know, I know that's the way you drew it up, but you don't necessarily expect the Padres to follow suit. Does that change the way you uh, approach them the second time having that success? Um, how do you, how does that affect you the second time through? I mean, it's, it's not just obviously we're going to have a one, two, three, and right? stay in the lineup as long as you can. So to go out there for the fourth, cut the nine up, nine down is a better feeling than the nine. But um, biggest thing for me is just try to separate the innings. Every time I go out to the mound, I take a deep breath and, it's, and it's just wipe this slate, slate clean, whatever's happened before, you know, good or bad. Um, something I've been doing lately, and I feel like it's allowed me to stay in a good mindset regardless of, you know, the results. And, um, just continue to try to do that. And then you were really fired up at the last out in the eighth inning. Um, how did you feel about, you know, the potential of going on? Did, did you try to talk Buddy into another inning? Or um, how did you feel after eight? Um, I was pretty tired, to be honest with you. And that's what I, that's what I told him. I mean, we had a good lead, especially with the out on runs. We had our closer. bar has been good for us all year. He's fresh. Top of the line coming up, it was just an, an honesty thing. I, I felt like I was, you know, a little bit past, you know, the point of where I was making my best pitches. I felt like I was a little tired, and I felt like we were in a good spot to, to hand the ball over to Daniel, and, and he got the job done. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Austin. Appreciate you taking the time. Yep. Everyone hang tight. We're going to have CJ Crohn for you here in about five, ten seconds. We are going to have to keep it short with, with uh, CJ here. All right, CJ, thank you for hopping on here with everybody. We'll go ahead and get started with Noah. Noah, go ahead. Hey, CJ. Um, earlier pregame, Bud said that um, he thought perhaps you had been a little bit too patient at the plate recently. Um, do you think that's part of the reason why you have been struggling here recently? Um, not necessarily, I don't think. Um, I haven't really noticed a difference. I, I mean, my three walks yesterday, there's not much I could do. I mean, if I swing, I'm going to get myself out of the ball. So I feel like I'm going to kind of, um, kind of given, uh, doing what, what they're giving me. Um, obviously, I have, um, I guess, maybe took a few pitches that I usually would swing at. So I guess um, I can see where he's coming from. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to get better at that and try to square up some balls um, in the zone that I know I can hit. Um, and then, obviously, you've been moved down to seventh in the lineup. Um, and I believe yesterday was the first time you had 2019. Um, when you're in that spot in the lineup compared to fourth or fifth, is there anything that you do a little bit differently than you would when you're hitting cleanup or fifth? No, not really. Um, I think a pitcher is going to pitch pitch a hitter the same way if you sit in one or nine. It's, it's, it's kind of that's kind of how the game's going. Uh, they have their scatter reports and. I think they're going to kind of stick to that. Um, but no, there's nothing wrong with seven. There's, there's good, still good opportunities down there, opportunities to impact the game. And uh, I'm just glad to be in the lineup, so I don't, I don't complain. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. All right, does anybody else have anything for CJ? All 
All right, Thomas Harding, go ahead. Uh, yes, CJ. Um, you know, when the team came off the road trip, uh, was there any discussion of kind of washing that away? Is that kind of uh, what baseball players do? How are you able to turn the corner on that? Uh, nothing was really mentioned. I think we've done it all year. It seems like we struggle on the road. We come back home and we just magically pick it up for whatever reason. I wish, obviously, wish we could play a little bit better on the road, um, but we're definitely confident here, confident that we can get wins in, in this stadium. Um, and yeah, when, when we come home, I, I, we, we play a lot better. And um, yeah, it is what it is. I'm not quite sure why, but I guess we'll take the wins when we can get them. And what was it like? playing behind Austin Gomber tonight. Uh, he works at a good pace and, and and he's pitching with a lot of confidence. Yeah, he was lights out. Uh, when a guy's working that quick, filling up the zone like he does, it's fun to play behind. And I know he had a lot of ground ball outs, kept everyone kind of involved, um, working quick, working fast. And um, yeah, he was, he was great tonight. And um, that was a great eight innings and we definitely needed that. Thanks, CJ. No problem. All right, go to Larry Patrick for the last question. Larry, go ahead. Yes, uh, CJ, when you hit the uh, ball for the home run, did you know it was out because Will Myers was like he lost the ball in the lights and he wasn't sure where it was? Did you know it was gone when you hit it? I, I thought it was. And then I saw his reaction. I figured I might as well start running a little bit faster. Um, I guess when it's twilight like that, uh, we can lose the ball up there. And like he did. I, I didn't really know exactly where the ball was. So once I saw him kind of put his hands out, I started running a little faster just in case. Um, I thought it was gone, but you, you never know with, with new baseballs and stuff like that. So I just tried to run hard and thankfully it went over. Okay. Thank you, CJ. No problem. All right, CJ. I think that's all the questions we have. Thank you, all sir. Right, thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. We will see you at Coors Field tomorrow.